If you're a fan of Annabelle Joseph, or as you could be called, a Fanabelle, get it? Like fan plus Annabelle is a Fanabelle. I'm so proud of that. I totally came up with that. Anyway, if you're a fan of mine and you read a lot of my books, you know that I write in two different genres. I write contemporary BDSM and also historical kinky uh, spanking stuff. A lot of my readers will read both type of books. They don't have a problem with switching from contemporary to historical, but there are other readers and I get it. They're like, you know what? I'm not, I don't think I would enjoy a historical book. Like they expect it'll be like stuffy or something. Oh, Lady Penelope, let us drink tea together and talk about very proper things. Indeed, Lady Margaret, we are so terribly proper. I mean, there are differences between historical and contemporary, especially heroes. And so I thought today I'd talk about some of the differences, and I think that you'll see that um, they're alike in a lot of ways, but also super different in a lot of ways. Let's start with um, communication in historical versus contemporary novels. Um, in contemporary novels, it's really almost become kind of hard because everybody in contemporary times is hyper-connected. Like, you know, we used to have these romance novels where there would be like a big misunderstanding or missed communication or something. That doesn't really happen uh, anymore in contemporary books because everyone's got a cell phone on their hip. So it's like, oh, I have a misunderstanding with uh, this person. Oh, why don't I send them a text? But in historical times, communication was very, very different because they didn't really speak openly, especially when it came to love and relationships. So, you know, you'd get this kind of like letter like dear lady edith my love for you is such that i dare not express it steadfastly yours lord winterbottom but i mean i would say in both historical and contemporary books like heroes don't always say what they mean and they aren't always able to say what they feel of course until the end when you know they declare their love so that's kind of, I mean, even though communication was different, that's kind of a similarity. So next we can talk about like, what kind of kinky items did they use? Today, we have all kinds of cool like, you know, you can go to any online kinky store and find cool like butt plugs, whips, um, chains, gear, like all kinds of neat things. So back in historical times, at least the historical time that I write about, which is a very specific time in the history of England, but whatever, um, there was a lot less, you know, they didn't, couldn't just, you know, pop down to the local adult store and buy dildos and stuff. So in historical books, you'll find a lot of use of like um, canes, switches, paddles, basically anything that's made out of wood and you know what those kind of things are like freaking painful and also when they were out in the garden getting their like hurdy tools something else that they figured out in uh, especially Victorian England is that they could take ginger like that ginger you buy at the store to cook food with they would peel it into like a butt plug shape and they would stick it in the bottom of their punishment victim. And so then every time you would get like smacked with the birch rod or the cane, like you would squeeze on this ginger in your butt and it would have a horrible stinging, like terrible sensation, which is super cringy, but also kind of awesome. Admit it, it's awesome. My readers like it anyway, my fanabells, cause they're all super perverts. Oh, your grace, the ginger, my bottom is tingling. <laughs> One 
big difference in the heroes of historical romance novels versus um, current day uh, BDSM books is that um, back in the day, men dress like in some real finery. Like they had embroidered coats that like fit them like ultimately fit like right against their skin because they were tailored because they were like super rich and everything was custom made and they had like really tight fitting pants or they even had like those riches that would show off their calf muscles and they wore like you know stockings and high heeled shoes and all kinds of amazing radical shit that no guys wear today and um when you look at the two together, like in my mind, I'm kind of more turned on by like the historical stuff. Um, I made a little graphic so you could kind of, you know, judge for yourself. Richard Madden has a really super nice bulge there. I mean, well, don't you think? He's Scottish, so that could possibly have something to do with it. I do love a girthy Scottish cock. But you shouldn't think about like how they did not bathe as frequently and they didn't wear like deodorant and stuff like that. Like, But like just put that out of your mind. That's realism and we already talked about that. So if you haven't tried historicals because you're not sure it'll be your cup of tea, um, I would encourage you to maybe just give one book a try. I have lots to choose from, and there are also a lot of other authors who kind of specialize in um, historical kinky shit. Um, you may find yourself pleasantly surprised. You may find yourself putting some ginger in the shopping cart at the grocery store and blushing a little bit. Who knows? Like water all over the table now. <laughs> I'm enjoying this too much. <laughs> this is I should be writing right now. Is the dribble one funnier? What? <laughs> I think maybe the first one was the best one. <laughs>